Hello and welcome back. C melodic minor scale today. Uh, it's a relative minor to E flat major. They both have three flats. B flat, E flat and A flat. Uh, we're starting on the open C string, which means this is going to be the longest scale we do in this chapter because it's going to use every single possible finger on all four strings. Yeah. Um, we have high 6th and 7th note, as always in the melodic minor. So the 6th and 7th note is going to be A and B. So A flat becomes A natural, B flat becomes B natural on the way up and goes back to normal on the way down. So let's have a look at the full finger pattern. Okay, we start on the open C string. So C. First finger is tone away for D. E flat semitone. Then we continue. G. Yeah, so one and two are together on the C string. Continue. Next note is that A natural, that sixth note. Followed by B natural, seventh note. And then we have a semitone to C. B natural to C is a semitone, yeah. That was our first octave, so one and two together on the C string, and two and three together on the G string. So we continue on C. Tone away is D. Then we have E flat, bow first finger. Continue, 2, F, tone, G, tone, A natural, tone. So we have a full spread inside our hand, but we have a low first finger, so that's where the semitone is, yeah? So we had A, and we remember that low first finger has come back to normal first finger because we have a B natural on the way up, remember? B natural, and that brings us back to C with the semitone. Yeah? So in the second octave we had a semitone between 0 and 1 for the D to E flat, and between B and C, first and second finger on the A string. Yeah? So let's finish the last two notes in first position. So we had C, D, and the last note is the E flat, so that's the semitone. Yeah? Now, as always, on the way down, it all goes back to what it's supposed to be, the, depending on the key signature. So that B we have here, that normal first finger, has to become a B flat. So make sure that sometime while you're playing, you pull that first finger back to that B flat. So we had E flat. That brings it back to C, the first note of the scale. C, B flat. And now we can't use an open string because we have an A flat next. Yeah, we had A natural on the way up, but A flat on the way down. So you have to build two, three, uh, sorry, three, four against each other. So we just play B flat. So we start building with three and four against each other. So. G, F, E flat next. That first, the low first finger stays. And now we have a full spread, yeah, to the D. And that brings it back to C. That was the first octave on the way down. Last octave is going to be C. B flat, low second, A flat, low first, and this time again we have to prepare for a normal fourth finger, G, F, E flat, first finger comes back, for a semitone to D, So 
on the way down, the finger pattern is identical to E flat major. On the way up, there are some differences. There's no shortcut to memorizing this. It's experience and practice. Write it down, draw out the finger patterns, do whatever you need to do, but memorize the finger pattern because you need to be able to prepare. And if you have to think all the time, playing pieces is going to get really slow. Yeah? Anyway, after this long introduction of all the notes, we're going to play it. Uh, one more thing. We only have one beat per note. So you don't have much time to think. We're at 40 now, plenty of time to look forward to the next note, to prepare on the way down. Remember, float the finger pattern over the string that you're going to use. You will not have time to build all those fingers to place them in the correct place. But if you remember the finger pattern that you need to use, float it, drop them all at the same time, and the more you practice it, the more accurate you'll be. Don't just throw your fourth finger at the next string. You might occasionally hit the right note, but you might as well miss it, yeah? It's far less reliable. Try to think ahead, know the finger pattern. Once those fingers are down in the right place, you get the next three notes for free, yeah? By the time you've played four, three, two, you have plenty of time to bring your first finger to the next string and the entire thing repeats itself. You have to think ahead, prepare in the air and drop the finger pattern. Let's give it a go. So, C minor at 40. One, two, three, four, C. So that is a long scale and it's pretty fast. I could hardly shout all the things you have to pay attention to. So take your time, repeat this as many times as you want. In the beginning, if you find the slurring confusing, don't. Yeah, tackle one problem at a time. Start with getting your left hand in order, intonation sorted. Use your ears, you only have one beat per note. We're pushing every single scale. We're demanding new things, yeah. Uh, we've noticed there's different rhythms, different bowings, all kind of things happening every single time on top of the new finger patterns. In this case, it's slurring and fast notes. And uh, the accompaniment will also bring new challenges. So go and have a look at that once you control the scale. Yeah. Don't rush ahead. Be patient. Prepare in the air. I'm going to keep on repeating it. When all those things are in order, down, pay attention to your posture, your thumbs, your shoulders. Yeah, straight back. Don't slouch with the instrument. I know it's a long scale, but also it's really fast, so it doesn't take all that long. It's just a lot of notes. Yeah. Anyway, I'll see you at either your complement or at 60. Take care. Bye.